Kungaloosh, and welcome. My name is Wes, and this is Addicted to Adventure, your base camp to explore the treasures and mysteries of the adventure genre. Today, we're talking about Sahara. Not the Sahara you're probably thinking of, though. This Sahara came out in 1983 and stars Brooke Shields. Sahara was produced by Canon Films. Canon, if you're not familiar with them already, has kind of a legend of its own. Uh, they were mainly known for producing low to mid-budget action movies throughout the 80s. Uh, things like Missing in Action, uh, Death Wish, Superman 4, uh, nothing you would call incredible. Uh, they also produced a handful of uh, adventure movies. Uh, this is probably the worst of the adventure movies that they made, which is not necessarily saying a whole lot, but uh, it's... It's not a great movie. I don't know how else to really say that. It does not have a Rotten Tomatoes score. I think it's because it's too old. But it does have a 4.9 on IMDb, which I, I would say is about fair, if not slightly generous. Uh, there are going to be spoilers ahead, but I don't think you're missing out on much with this one. Uh, so buckle up. Here we go. Our story opens in 1927. Our main character, Dale, played by Brooke Shields, is a little bit of a daddy's girl. Her father has developed a new kind of race car. Dale may have been born into a wealthy family, but she's just like you or me. For example, she enjoys taking the race car for a spin around the family racetrack, or having lavish 1920s flapper parties in their humble mansion. You know, just like you or I would do. Unfortunately, Dale's father dies while testing the new race car, which means he will be unavailable to compete in an endurance race across the Sahara Desert. Only men are allowed to compete in the race, so Dale decides to disguise herself as a man and enter the race herself. Dale maintains her disguise for about 30 seconds, revealing that she's actually a woman right after she crosses the starting line. During the race, Dale decides to take a dangerous shortcut and gets captured by one of the two warring desert tribes. The tribe's second-in-command, Rasul, played by John Rhys Davies, claims Dale as a concubine and wastes no time trying to get all up in that. And this is the good tribe. The sheik, Jafar, who is the nephew of Rasul, claims Dale as his wife in order to save her from his uncle's advances. Dale is so overjoyed to be the sheik's wife that she escapes the next morning to finish the race. Dale then manages to get captured by the other tribe, led by Beg, played by Ronald Lacey. Beg, for reasons of evilness, throws Dale into a pit of leopards. Jafar leads his men in an attack that is straight out of Lawrence of Arabia, just much more boring. He eventually saves Dale from the leopards in one of the few exciting scenes in the film, and she immediately rejoins the race. She fails to get captured again, sadly, so she wins the race instead. Then she immediately jumps on a horse to rejoin her captor, I mean, her true love. Now, as you can probably tell, I wasn't the biggest fan of Sahara. Uh, the biggest thing about it is that it was boring, largely. Uh, and that is probably the worst sin an adventure movie can commit. Uh, this kind of drags for the first 20 minutes, uh, which is kind of a long time to get things rolling, at least without something to hook you and keep you interested. Uh, by the time it does get rolling, it kind of throws one of the more interesting plot points right out the window immediately, which is, of course, that Dale has to disguise herself as a man in order to compete in the race, which, you know, that is certainly not a plot point we haven't seen in a hundred other movies. Uh, but they throw it out the window immediately. And uh, I have to think that that could have been put to much better use. Especially for a plot that is so simplistic as this movie. This, the plot of this is so plain that it's, it's boring. So the tone of this movie is kind of inconsistent. And that is something I've noticed with a lot of canon films is they have trouble finding a lane and sticking to it. They kind of want to be everything. And as a result, they're kind of none of those things. 
Uh, this movie has a plot that is pretty straight laced. It's not what I'd call overly lighthearted or uh, whimsical, but then it is sort of uh, interrupted every now and again with a storyline that is clearly supposed to be wacky. Uh, you have the German team in this race who takes a little side quest to go deliver illegal arms to one of the two tribes. And it, you know, is sort of played off as a uh, Three Stooges hijinks type of thing. It really doesn't mesh with the rest of the movie. Uh, the rest of the movie, especially when they're trying to make this uh, forced romance, it feels like they're trying for real dramatic depth and romance, and that doesn't really work either. Uh, it just never picked a lane, and it suffers as a result. This movie does actually have some interesting connections to other adventure movies. Uh, Lambert Wilson, who plays the Sheik Jafar in this movie, also is in another movie called Sahara, where he plays the villain Yves Massard. Then we have uh, the leader of the enemy tribe in this. Uh, he is played by Ronald Lacey, who plays Colonel Tote in Raiders of the Lost Ark and famously gets his face melted off at the end. And lastly, we have John Rhys Davies, who everyone knows from Lord of the Rings movies, but he also plays Sala in Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It's pretty sad when the most interesting thing about your adventure movie is that people in it were in better adventure movies. <laughs> so overall, this was not great. As a matter of fact, the entire movie was kind of flat and dull, sadly. My, I would give this a grade of C- minus or D+, plus, I think, so not great. I can't recommend that you run out and find it. And you do actually have to hunt for this one. Why do I do this to myself? Well, so you don't have to, I guess. <laughs> so, until next time, fortune and glory, my friends. Yeah!